greetings of the day. This is module number two. What I am going to cover is cargo losses and assessment. Assessment, which is going to cover there are different types of cargos, there are different types of losses. Then there is a method of assessment and giving depreciation allowance. Also, there is a six degree freedom of the vessel. So, how it is important considering on deck cargo and cargo in containers or maybe break, break bulk cargo. Then, how depreciation allowance is worked out, pre dispatch survey, transparency index, and then there are some brain teasing questions provided at the end of this lecture. Basically, types of cargo, when we look at the types of cargo, the first is dry bulk cargo. Now, why we should know different types of cargo? Because the losses are either in quantity or in quality. So, you should know how quantity, how the cargo loaded or unloaded from the vessel is worked out, it is found out. So, there are different methods of measurement and there are different types of cargo you should know. So, first thing is dry bulk consignment, dry bulk cargo. So, this is without any formal packaging. Example could be given like coal, sulfur, fertilizers, soda ash. Uh, many times pulses are coming as a uh, in such uh, dry bulk consignments. So, these are the methods of dry bulk consignment. Now, the method of assessment of cargo loaded or unloaded from vessel is by displacement survey or also it is known as a draft survey of the vessel carried out. It is carried out at load port. It is also carried out at unloading port. It is a function of two survey at each place. It is before loading and after loading at load port and before unloading and after unloading at uh, unloading port. So, from this displacement survey, we are trying to find out how much cargo is loaded and unloaded from the vessel. Subsequently, after unloading, either it is kept as a stockpile and then the deliveries are affected by either wagon loading or the trucks on lorry load basis. <coughs> the next part of is liquid bulk consignment. Now, liquid bulk consignments are also in multiple uh, groups. For example, petroleum crude oil petroleum products, lubricating oils, diesel, petrol and such type of xylene, para xylene, these type of items. Then there are various types of chemicals. Then there are crude oil for edible uh, purpose. Then refined edible oils. Then there is a liquid petroleum gases, liquid natural gases. So LPG, LNG and these liquid gases. The method of assessment is to find out how much is gas, how much is liquid. Uh, and to find out volumetric analysis. So, that is known as a alit survey. It is a depth of liquid which is taken and volume is assessed to find out how much cargo is loaded and unloaded. Subsequently, it is taken to the tank farm and from tank farm, the deliveries are either through pipeline to the installation or maybe it is going by the tank the lorries. The third consignment is brake bulk consignment which, is a, which could be project cargo, pallets, coils, bags and then the method of assessment of this quantity, it is only by carrying out the tally. Cargo tally is taken by the stevedores provided and then they do take tally to find out how much cargo is unloaded. What is the condition of that? Earlier insurance company also appoint to, used to appoint a cargo unloading supervisors to find out what is the cargo condition in vessel at the time of unloading, during deliveries and what is the condition at the time of deliveries and what is the loss. So, unloading supervision were appointed. When the premium started coming down, the insurance company has stopped appointing surveys to carry out, carry out uh, loading or unloading supervision of this particular uh, brake bulk cargo. The third, the, the fourth is unitized cargo. Maybe it is a over dimensional cargo, containerized cargo, there are different types of containers. And then you should know that containers, those are open top or container which is a flat track container. It is considered in all respect, it is to be considered in all respect on deck cargo. Whereas other containers is not to be considered as a on deck cargo. The method of assessment is cargo tally is taken at the time of unloading. 
Then during storage also it is counted how much cargo is stored and during deliveries also it is checked that how much cargo is being delivered and how much what is the condition at the time of delivery. There is every possibility during delivery if there are damages then the joint survey is held. Now we are coming to different types of losses. Basically, uh, you can group this one into two parts. One is general average. I am not going to discuss general average now because there is a separate module prepared only for subject which is devoted to general average. But then you look at the cargo is jettisoned by the vessel. What is jettisoning? That to maintain stability or to maintain the uh, to take care of the, uh, the the problems in the vessel, some of the part of part cargo is jettisoned. Here I am referring to jettisoning of cargo and not jettisoning of the parts of the vessel, which is which is which will be covered under hull policy. Then after that, the cargo is divided into brake bulk consignment and bulk consignment. If it is a brake bulk consignment, the method of assessment of cargo loaded or unloaded from the vessel is by cargo carry. Stevedores are appointed or cargo superintendents are appointed to carry out the tally of this cargo. If it is a dry bulk consignment, as, as I already mentioned, that the method of assessment of cargo is by displacement survey or it is known as a draft survey to find out how much cargo is loaded or unloaded from the vessel. If it is a alleged survey, it is for the liquid bulk, that is the vacation in the tanks which is measured to find out how much cargo is there after loading and how much cargo is unloaded and how, what is the residue, what is the remain on board to find out. So that is by alleged survey. From all these things, we are trying to find out how much cargo is short landed by the vessel and or it is a LOB, uh, that is a lost overboard or it is a short shipment or it could be a landed but missing. Now, who gives LOB certificate? The master of the vessel gives LOB certificate. Who gives short landing certificate? Short landing certificate is given by port. Say for example, Mumbai Port Trust will give short landing certificate when the cargo is short landed in Mumbai Port. So each port will give short landing certificate considering their tally. The, their central uh, documentation office, they have the cargo tallies and then with based on that, they will check with the manifest and they will give short landed certificate. Then there is a landed but missing certificate. There has to be a complaint lodged with the police station. The cargo was landed. There is no short landing, but subsequently it is missing. So you, you, you should know what is LOB certificate, what is landed but missing certificate, what is short landing certificate uh, and what is short shipment. Because certain cargo there is every possibility it is not shipped at all. It is shut out. It is not loaded. Now there is every possibility advanced bills of lighting is issued and hence the bills of lighting is issued but cargo is not unloaded. So there is a possibility of short, short shipment which has to be checked by the attending surveyor and insurance company at the time of settlement of claim. Now coming to the physical damages, there are different types of damages. The damages attributable to delay and aggravation. Now the losses attributed whatsoever reason delay may be, delay may be caused by perils insured against, the losses attributable to the delay are not covered under the policy. Rough handling damages are covered. People are using hooks. They are not, they are not taking proper care. The forklifts are not taken, taking pr proper care of the cargo. Forklifts are damaging the cargo. Forklifts are damaging the newsprint drills. Forklifts are damaging the boxes, reels, coils. So now these are the rough handling, bad handling, which is not excluded from scope of policy. Then there is an inadequate negligence. Negligence on part of handler, negligence on part of transporter. It is not excluded from scope of policy. But negligence, you can say, in other words, if it is a misconduct on part of the assured, then it is not covered under the policy. Inadequate packaging, any any the losses attributed to improper packaging, inadequate packaging is not covered under the policy. But the, there could be damages because of inadequate packaging, absence of packaging, improper packaging, but then these damages can uh, lead to losses 
and then this is when at the time of adjustment the insurance surveyor may say that this is attributable to inadequate packaging and hence it is not covered under the the policy inherent nature of cargo is not covered spontaneous combustion the liquefaction of the cargo okay so the evaporation of cargo so these adherence of cargo so these are all you know losses attributable to inherent nature of cargo which is not covered under the policy rain sea water fresh water moisture damage rain water damage of course it is covered under the policy you are trying to find out by silver nitrate test whether it is a rain water damage or sea water damage sea water damage it will it is implies that could be the loss has taken place during transit fresh water damage will indicate possible rain water damages cannot be or moisture damages cannot be excluded oil mud and foreign matters there is nothing to say much on that the effect of heating and sweating heating many times the cargo is kept on uh, ffo tanks which requires heating so when the cargo is because of the uh, the cargo the, the 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 fuel which is there in the double bottom tanks they are heated there is a possibility that cargo can get damaged because of this heating sweating is a condensation sweating damages as such are not covered under the policy the sweating condensation can be of cargo condensation can be of container condensation can be inside ship so sweating and country damage the country damage word this is used only in cotton trade cotton trade the warfinges when they used to take tally on war they used to write down whether the damages has taken place uh, in ship so there will be a rush damage there will be uh, if the soil embedding is there then it is definitely a country damage it is not a ship damage so they used to write only two words country damage and ship damage still many times foreign surveyors when he want to indicate that the loss has taken place during inland transit he is using word country damage but then country damage normally it is used in cotton trade ordinary damages we are in there what is ordinary ordinary world as per lloyds handbook of interpretation of marine torres the ordinary world is contrasted with the world accident which is non accidental which is non fortuitous which is not having fortuity but the damage has taken place because of any other reasons maybe it is a bad packaging there are no accidents but still damage has taken place then that is the ordinary damage so ordinary damages ordinary wear and tear of the consignment etc which is not covered under the it is not covered under the policy so we should know all these thing then there are uh, various uh, see it is like this the losses attributable to insects it is not fumigated properly so all these damages are not covered under the policy uh, infestation damages infestation damages could be like you know marine insurance act 55.3 it is excluding the damages because of the rodents and because of insects the damages are not covered of pest what they use word pest pest and rodents which is not covered under the policy then there are manufacturing defects naturally if there is a manufacturing defect the loss has not taken place during inland uh, the, uh, the transit not inland transit overall in transit and then it cannot be what we are covering in the physical losses and damages in transit if there is no physical loss but then there is a rejection on account of manufacturing defect then it is not covered under the policy why it should be covered under the policy then there are theft and pilferage if it is a all risk policy theft and pilferage are automatically covered there are no no issues in that but then uh, many times c or b policy the tpnd clause is separately added so it is a theft and pilferage which is covered automatically if it is a cargo a policy otherwise there is a separately tpnd clause is attached any other reasons for the losses now i cannot list out entire thing there could be hundreds of reason for the losses but then as a surveyor we are trying to find out the losses based on is it is like this i am not present at the time of loss taking place so but then still i am trying to recommend that this loss is falling in exclusion 
or it is not falling in exclusion so then it is like this that it is it is based on balance of probabilities as a surveyor i am trying to check various types of probabilities and then based on balance of probabilities i am convinced maybe 51% i am convinced that loss is not falling in exclusion provided in the policy and 49% i am not convinced but then the benefit of doubt has to be given to assured so always surveyor comment basically we should be taking allegations to cause of loss from the consignee that what is your opinion why loss has taken place and then surveyor can give comment whether he agrees or he doesn't agree with this uh, reason what is given simple methods of loss assessment for example if you have uh, the difference between gross to gross the difference in weight is a net shortage for example bags are damaged for example if the uh, if there are damages which is uh, to the drums now you take the manifested gross for example manifested gross of one bag is 50 50.5 kilos and then you are taking the assess actually surveyor is measuring is trying to find out what is the uh, uh, assess gross and then say it is coming 30.8 kilos so the shortage is 19.7 kilo shortage is 19.7 kilos similarly if it is a coil it is a reel it is a newsprint reel here i am not shown the depth of cut t which is a t but then if the depth of cut is 1 inch 2 inch if you strip out that 1 inch paper on the circumference then the loss is to the extent of the paper which is stripped out now this can be find out from the mathematical formula which is given in marine surveys handbook which is a lloyds publication so it is a the formula is very simple depreciation that is a paper or the coil or the steel it is for the it is normally for the purpose of coils so it is trying to tell you how much cargo is stripped out uh, from the mathematical formula 4t t is a depth of cut in bracket d minus d is a diameter minus t is a depth of cut multiply by w w is a weight of that particular reel or coil divided by d square minus c square c is a core d is a diameter t is a depth of cut and w is a weight so now this is the method for the coils and reels etc now what is the method of what is the method of to find out what is the loss so if it is a consignment which is uh, chemical consignments are there then the method of analysis is going to be uh, actual analysis there might be a sea water analysis there may be a chemical analysis to find out what is the impurity what is the purity etc <coughs> based on this analysis based on various uh, survey finding we are trying to find out what is the extent of loss what is the nature of loss what is the cause of loss of course cause of loss the surveyor is not present so he is trying to comment on cause of loss based on balance of probabilities and then if it is a chemical consignment how much reprocessing is possible if it is a engineering item which is in damaged condition whether repairing is possible or repairing is not possible try to understand one thing if it is a electronic item maybe the psychology of the end users is such that if it is in damaged condition we will reject they have no faith in hindu mara system whereas for other other machineries maybe it is sent back to oem that is original equipment manufacturer for the purpose of repairing but then otherwise so there are different types of consignment if it is machinery it can be repaired electronic machinery my experience factor says that 99% they refuse to carry out repairing because it is expensive it is a basically assembly uh, units are there and then getting the parts and assembling testing etc is so expensive so they say that no once it is damaged it is totally rejected how particular average loss depreciation allowance is worked out now particular average is that particular loss smv that is the sound market value try to understand in marine cargo when we are giving a depreciation allowance the invoice cost is disregarded we are trying to find out what is the sound market value of that goods so what could be sound market value it is the invoice cif value 
plus maybe 10% or any other incidental expenses like clearing, forwarding, local transportation, taxes, etc. Plus, of course, duty which is already paid on that particular account. So, we are considering what is the sound market value of the goods. We are disregarding the invoice value. We are also trying to find out what is the damage market value of the goods. How to find out damage market value? Damage market value you can find out considering uh, maybe by uh, getting quotation from the market, maybe by when you are trying to sell the cargo by tender, then you are getting a damage market value. And then what is the IV insured value? The insured value could be different. It could be CI plus 10%, 20%, 5%. It depends. Uh, maybe duty is insured, duty is not insured. So whenever we are settling an insured value, uh, the claim is settled on insured value minus damage market value, the loss payment is at destination, the short of destination, it is a sum insured minus how much you are getting a damage market value. Whereas once the consignment is reaching final destination, the method of assessment is to find out what is the sound market value minus damage market value that bs to sound market value in terms of percentage, that percentage are applicable on uh, sum insured. So this is the method. It is this is this particular uh, method of assessment of depreciation is there in Marine Insurance Act 1906, section 71.3. So if you read that section carefully, that will tell you how the depreciation allowances to be worked out. This is a video clip. Basically, I am trying to show six degree freedom of the vessel. The vessel is having a movement on X, Y, and Z axis. She is rolling, she is pitching, she is yawing, she is surging, she is swaying, she is heaving. So, in all this direction, she is having a movement. Now, you just see the video clip and you will understand why, what will happen to the cargo if it is on deck. The washing over of the cargo from deck is possible. Try to understand many underwriters, they say that if it is an open top container or if the container is a flat rack container, then the cargo in these containers will be treated as a on deck containers and we will be charging additional premium for them. So you should know what is 6 degree freedom. What happens to, suppose with this movement, what will happen to ca cargo inside? So that is the reason packaging is very, packaging has to be very good. The lashing has to be very good. The dunaging will have to be provided very nicely considering. So this video clip will tell you that what are the moments of this vessel and what can happen to cargo. Assessment of loss. Now, I said that depreciation percentage are given as per the authority to survey is given. In Marine Insurance Act 1906, Section 171.3, where it is clearly indicated that how to assess, how to assess the allowance considering sound market value and damage market value of the goods that bears to sound market value and whatever percentage you get that is applicable on some insured 
here we are disregarding different type of invoice value etc we are trying to work out what is a sound market there is another method of reasonable uh, repair, uh, repairing charges if it is a equipment etc then the allowance is not given but you are trying to find out what is a reasonable cost of repair if there are chemicals we are trying to find out what are going to be processing expenses maybe certain markup expenses are subsequently added on them but now i am giving you example you will just see that there are three market conditions either market is steady the market is falling or market is rising so in steady market what is method of assessment of loss depreciation how it is worked out if it is a falling market you see what happens when the market is falling the chances of rejection of entire consignment is much more because there is a commercial loss attached with it that i have purchased something in 1000 rupees but the market is fallen down to 500 so if it is slightly in damage condition my tendency will be to reject entire thing so i can put up a claim for total loss with the insurance company similarly during rising market you may get uh, the market is rising in such a extent that when you are trying to sell this cargo in a salvage market you are getting same equal to some insured so that time insurance company comes and tell that look your sum insured is 1000 rupees you are getting 1000 as a salvage where is question of loss no there is a loss now the method of assessment of losses are indicated as per this section 71 so now let us take example that market is steady in steady market when the insured value is 1000 the gross sound market naturally it is a steady market so insured value and gross sound value is same there is no difference the damage market value of that particular consignment is 750 you need you say rupees dollars whatever it is so the loss so the sum the claimant will put up a claim that 1000 minus 750 so 250 uh, dollars or rupees is the claim now that that will be around 25% and then it is 250 uh, which is recommended by the surveyor there are no issues there are no hassle there are no discussion there are no uh, complaints in the market is steady but what happens when the market is falling for example certain goods are uh, <coughs> insured for 1000 by the time this i have come i have come across oil consignment i have seen in falling market i have seen newsprint consignment in falling market and then when whenever the market is falling the tendency is to reject entire thing because there is a commercial loss attached to it. so for example there is a 1000 uh, dollars per ton is the price of uh, newsprint reels by the time it came to india the market has fallen down to 500 dollars a uh, ton now when i am trying to sell this thing in the uh, salvage market i am getting 375 dollars a ton so the insured has put up a claim 1000 minus 375 so 625 is the claim which is lodged by insured now i said no that is not the correct method because what is sound market value sound market value of the goods is 500 what is damage market value it is 375 So 500 minus 375 divided by 500, multiply 100 by 100. So it comes to 25 percent. Now these 25 percent are applicable on some insured, which is 1000, and it will come to 250 rupees dollars, whatever you call it. Now coming to the rising market. In rising market, what happened? The some insured is 1000. By the time this consignment came to Indian market, the market has risen to Thousand uh, five hundred uh, units, dollars, or rupees. Now it is in damaged condition, and you are trying to get eleven twenty-five rupees from the market as a salvage value. So sound market value is thousand five thousand five hundred. The damaged market value is one thousand one hundred twenty-five, and the insurance company is trying to tell there is no loss because some insured is thousand. I do not agree. There is a loss. how loss is worked out which is spelled out in section 71 which says it is 1500 minus 1125 divided by 1500 multiplied by 100 it becomes 25% the 25% loss is on uh, the applicable is on sum insured which is 1000 so you should be paying 250 because in market value definitely uh, the market the salvage value is more 
in falling market naturally this falling salvage also will fall so how to assess workout depreciation it is by sound market value minus damage market value which bears to sound market value multiplied by 100 which is the percentage uh, allowance which is applicable on sub insurer pre dispatch survey why pre dispatch survey is required whenever consignments are coming on cif basis that is when the the some ins- the insurance is at by foreign underwriters it is not insured in india and then the after unloading many times the foreign underwriter they restrict their policy to uh, port only mumbai port only indian ports only chennai ports only kandla port only they will not give extension up to warehouse they will say only port only now after port the indian underwriters are giving policy right up to final destination now before that accepting the risk for inland journey the insurance companies are asking for a pre dispatch survey now what is the scope of survey it is only external survey you cannot open the packet because it cannot be repacked and the damages will be more so it is only external survey and surveyor should be quite competent enough to comment on possibility of internal damages looking at the external uh, external packages so it is a external inspection no surveyor should tell that open the packet because then it cannot be repacked then he should ask for photographic evidence nowadays with mobile cell phone cameras etc giving the uh, photographic evidence is not difficult although i understand couple of cfs couple of port there are cctv monitoring is there vigilance is there and at such places it will be difficult you can always ask for the women supervision that okay what is the weight in the docks premises because there are certain consignment that are susceptible to theft and pilferage so to avoid that uh, and to find out if, uh, what was the weight at docks premises or the uh, origin etc and then when it has reached the docks what was the weight now containers when they are stuffed it is to be inspected for container conditions the, there has to be proper suppose it is a commodity then there has to be proper craft paper lining there has to be silica gel place so container inspection is very very important it is before stuffing a cargo and of course at the time of destuffing a cargo also container tally can be taken to find out what is condition of cargo and how much uh, what is the uh, cargo how much cargo is unloaded and whether it is in damaged condition many time consignment is coming on lcl basis that is less than container load there also cargo tally is taken to find out what is condition of each package while it was in container and at the time of destuffing from the container this is the transparency index of the world this is also known as a, this is published by transparency international this is also known as a corruption index of the world many times you will find foreign underwriters are restricting their policy to port only now the question is why because they do not know what is the road conditions in your uh, country say for example india they do not know the political condition they do not know what is the corruption index of the police they do not know the corruption index of surveyor they do not know the road condition they do not know anything about your country and that is the reason they restrict or they have apprehensions about your country so they restrict their cover to poor only we also should be restricting if you feel that corruption index is low if the lower the corruption index higher is the corruption so if it is any corruption index if you see the uh, chart and if it is the corruption index is indicating six and above say canada new zealand america uh, or these places you know australia naturally you can extend give a warehouse to warehouse policy but if you find it is going to pakistan don't give warehouse to warehouse policy restrict it to kara restrict up to karachi port only restrict to that particular afghanistan restrict to the port only do not extend uh, for inland journey let afghanistan uh, local insurance company after pre dispatch survey give a coverage for inland journey so this corruption index is very helpful and i i i'll tell you one of my uh, one of a story or one of uh, when i started my career in 1981 as a surveyor i was doing unloading supervision of stainless steel coils now these stainless steel coils were imported 
and one of the party i i don't remember the name of that particular party but it was a very small party and used to import one coil see what a stainless steel utensils manufacturer in 81 stainless steel was having a premium in indian market so in, he has, he used to he has imported one coil the weight was 6 ton and i was doing a cargo unloading and delivery supervision i told that party your coil is lying at 13 bid please go pay custom duty and clear it as early as possible because it can be misplaced it can be you know landed but missing it can be pilfered anything can happen now the gentleman came after eight or 10 days he has seen his coil it is not there it is missing so he asked me that what has happened i said your coil was there if you see the uh, landing remark certificate issued by port your coil is not short landed by the vessel there is no short landing of any of the coil but then this coil may be uh, somebody has replaced the label they have taken the coil maybe pilfered so lodge a police complaint when the police complaint was lodged the yellow gate police station was uh, they are having their own methods of accepting a police complaint uh, the it was not very much encouraging to the party so party came to me is telling me what to do gavarikar uh, the underwriters are uh, uh, the foreign underwriters said our policy is only port only so we cannot uh, honor your claim the yellow gate police station even if they are accepting the complaint tracing the coil giving it back to him it was really a difficult thing and he was somehow he was thinking party was thinking that it is not possible that i will get this coil back he came to me i suggested i was doing you know there is a mafia going in the uh, port premises but it is very difficult nobody is going to accept it it is something like that that there are mafias in bombay but you go to police station they will say no there is nothing like that similarly the police will never agree that there are mafias operating in uh, port i told you go to one of the local mafia you know he was very famous for bill fried and theft from the dumps i said you go to him tell him that you are a poor person your one coil is missing he has gone to that fellow i think he was staying somewhere in matinda he has gone to him he has maybe you know uh, whatever rituals he has completed and then he was promised that he will get his coil back you will not believe that after 15 days my that party has telephoned me he is telling gavarikar you suggested go to mafia and beg in front of him that you are a poor person and you should get your coil back uh i he has given me a coil so i am thanking you for 100 times i said why you got your coil back it is okay he said no my coil was only 6 ton weight uh, manifested weight was 6 ton what the gentleman has given or what the mafia has given it is a 9 ton coil so he was really happy he got a excess weight then he telling it is it is better you cut it and use it you know uh, then uh, i said why you are thanking me again second time he is telling duty free i have not paid any custom duty it came to my godown directly now i said look something illegal thing has taken place you cutter coil don't talk this thing with any of the personality this is a old story i don't remember name said that next day i went to docks premises there was one clearing and it was complaining surveyor my one 9 toner coil was lying here it is missing so theft and pilferage from docks were very easy that those days nowadays it is very difficult there are cctv cameras and then things are strict the chances of theft and pilferage from the dock premises are reduced drastically the security is tightened it is not in the hands of only bombay police but there are uh, crpf etc there also is more in this so this is just story and then why i wanted to emphasize on the transparency in that i wanted to emphasize that when you are looking for a warehouse to warehouse policy you see where the titles of goods are transferred where the insurable interest is attached and then you restrict for export consignment you restrict your policy to port only when the transparency index of that particular country is lesser than 6 thank you now certain brain teasing teasing questions i have placed 
you go through each question and you know reply you prepare your three lines two lines uh, a reply to that is fear of loss is covered now what is covered is a physical losses the fear of loss is not covered under any type of policy but then there are many times the pharmaceutical or a uh, couple of people they will launch their claim they will say probability it damage we cannot use it it may happen something like that no what we want to know insurance company wants that we should be commenting on extent of damages and the nature of damages the cause of damages fear of loss is not covered under the policy is packaging cost can be claimed no packaging cost if it is forming part of the say for example there is a refrigerator with packaging not refrigerator let us say air conditioner which is having a carton now the carton price it is embedded with the price invoice cost of that particular air conditioner so you can say if the damages to packaging are there naturally he can say i cannot sell this uh, consignment to my uh, retailer or the end client because packaging in damaged condition but that time he cannot reject the consignment uh, on the ground that packaging is damaged so what he should be doing he should be asking normally 99% this type of supplier they give 10% or 5% packaging extra so if when certain damages are there certain crushing is there etc then it can be replaced so packaging cost can be covered the repackaging uh, labor involved can be part of your claim the truck was overloaded and met with an accident the so it is very difficult for any surveyor to prove that the accident is because of overload the court has asked me one question that can you say have you done the forensic check of the truck have you checked the brakes have you checked the uh, suspensions etc i said no because that is not my job but then the truck is overloaded and it has failed while they were descending on the uh, hills and then it is presumed that this failure of brake it is attributed to the overloading of the truck the court said it is only a presumption but then i told my lawyer to argue on the basis that the overloading it is a illegal venture and marine insurance act is not covering illegal venture so as it is very difficult for a surveyor or a insurance company to prove that loss is attributed to overloading so what they should say if at all they want to repudiate the claim they should go on legality of the venture and if the, the truck is loaded in the factory premises and if it is overloaded naturally the uh, the Ill 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 illegality venture he is privy he is having his privities the next is the uh, there is a waste shortage in coal due to reduction in moisture from 13% to 12% now this is a natural losses which is attributed which is not covered under any type of policy the natural losses it is the evaporation of moisture there is no actual loss has not taken place and then this is not covered under the policy because it is a inherent nature of coal to get evaporated and because of evaporated the moisture original was 13% now it is reduced say, from 13.98% to 12.11% so the difference is evaporation which is not a physical loss and that cannot they cannot claim it with shortage on that basis the lashing parted on the bar the parting of lashing once it is certified etc you cannot say it is improper packaging maybe it could be because of perils of the seas the sea was rough and then uh, the the calculations whatever it was there it was correct but then still the lashing parted and it is considered an accident it will be covered under the policy the oil shortage due to clingage and evaporation and volatile see clingage loss or evaporation it is a inherent nature of cargo which is not covered under the policy the externally packaging is sound but internally equipment is damaged now this needs further investigation and how it was secured inside what are the inner uh, cushioning was provided why everything is sound from external but then it was their movement inside because then if it is internal movement is there from external sound packaging which is not showing any impact etc it is naturally poor and bad packaging which will not be covered under the policy the container the cargo in container has collapsed now it is not properly stuffed container so if you see the exclusion 4.3 which says that container is deemed to include uh, packaging 
that means if this pentane is stopped prior to attachment of the risk or if pentane is stopped by the employees of the uh, assured or if it is stopped by the assured or prior to attachment of the risk then it is deemed to be a packaging and if it is not done properly the chances the claim will be repudiated the hot briquetted ion in port caught fire now it is a with the hbi getting spontaneous combustion it is a inherent nature of the fire hbi sponge ion coal they can have a spontaneous combustion now if you are not given a special cover as a for a spontaneous combustion any losses attributed to fire because of spontaneous combustion will not be covered under the particular policy the unpaid crew of ship sold some cargo at the port at the, at the port of refuge one of the port now this is also you know insolvency or financial default of managers etc is not covered under the policy the consignment of mango was shut out but the ship has and back to town formality shut out by the ship now the mango even in refrigerated consignment it is having a limited shelf life so if it is shut out and it takes more time naturally i have seen a black spots forming on mango it was in refer container but because because they realized that it is shut out the order was cancelled because the receiver the buyer knew that now this consignment will never come in a good condition because it was shut out from this particular vessel after shut out because order is cancelled the part is taken back to town taken to cold storage by the time these mangoes were having black spots and which is attributed to the nature of the cargo it is attributed to delay delay whatsoever reason delay is caused delay the loss is attributed to delay the loss is not payable under the policy so these are the uh, sub brain tree thesis you can have your own opinion you may not agree with my opinion as a surveyor and then, but you can write it down you can give the court cases etc so this will be very helpful in your uh, uh, study purpose thank you very much i have completed this particular module which is covering about the cargo losses in preparation of this module i have taken all efforts to ensure that information in this module is correct to the best of my knowledge at the press of time myself and publisher of this module do not assume and hereby disclaim any liability to any party to any loss damage or disruption caused by errors or omissions whether such errors or omissions result from negligence accident or any other cause